Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, welcome. My name is Monica. In today's video, I am going to be reacting to Bridgerton Season 3 Part 2. So, keep watching. Good morning. It is, and I am shaking again because I am on my couch instead of on my bed. Because <sighs> my family's gone to do something so I can sit here on an actual TV and watch it. <clears throat> Um, it is Wednesday morning, June 13th. I just woke up, got myself some breakfast, and now I am going to sit and watch Bridgerton. This is my thoughts on Bridgerton, and I will let you know. The first episode that we're going to watch is, uh, season three, episode five, and it's called TikTok. And my dogs are somewhere asleep, and I have no idea. Oh, I see Walter. He's at the door. I need to go let him in. And I'm going to start this and I'll let you know what I think. Bye. Hey guys, I am finished with episode five, TikTok. And I understand the uh, reason why they named it TikTok because um, Eloise had put a timeline on when she needed to tell Colin that she is Lady Whistledown. And that whole plot line really stressed me out, honestly, because I was like, ugh, I understood uh, Eloise's motivations, but I didn't particularly like it. She should have been able to tell Colin when it was her time. So we found out that um, my favorite couple, Anthony and Kate, are indeed going to have a baby. And we found that, very early, found that out very early on. And then um, we also found out that Cressida is going to be marrying a really old, very strict man who's going to change her her appearance, the way she dressed, the way she talks, her, all her mannerisms. I actually felt bad for her because a lot of women went through that in that time because marriages were uh, political and financial alignments were, instead of for love matches. That's why um, Lady Featherington's reaction to um, Penelope's betrothal to Colin was very appropriate for that particular time period. And we are seeing Lord Sterling and um, Francesca's love story come out more. Where she says something about my husband should be this, this, and this. And then he says, of course I will. <laughs> I was like, aww. Um, I, the scene where Colin takes... Penelope to the house they're going to be living in and then uh, they step in front of the mirror it was not cute it was a little cringe for me I was like okay it seemed it, it seemed very rehearsed scripted not organic if I should say anyway the ending where Cressida says oh I am Lady Whistledown but Penelope faints because she's so stressed out by uh, Eloise's um, ultimatum. She had until midnight to tell him, or she or uh, Eloise would tell him. And I get that she was trying to protect her brother, but I feel like Eloise is very cold in this one. Like I'm not seeing the Eloise I really liked in the books, or the Eloise that I liked in the first season and second season so i'm just like i've sort of had it with her anyway th so those are my thoughts i am now about to start romancing mr bridgerton which is episode six we shall see how this one goes all right toodles okay Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. 
so everything went a little nuts with Cressida saying that she's Lady Whistledown. We didn't get to see Anthony or Kate in this really. Um, Francesca and John Sterling are engaged and Violet does not particularly like this match for some reason, which, okay, maybe because she's a little too comfortable with him. I, I don't know, but they wanted her to talk to the queen and she's like, keeps trying to put it off. And they, they had a bit of a fight over it. Come to find out at the very end when Penelope had to rush a, uh, a, a, uh, addition of Lady Whistledown to stop Cressida from hurting anybody. Colin's like, you are Lady Whistledown. She's like, oh crap. Yeah, that's this is going to be interesting. Anyway, there's the thing with Marcus and Lady Danbury. I'm not really sure what that is about. And honestly, I don't really care. But so far, it's good. Um, I, mean, I enjoyed um, um Romancing Mr. Bridgerton more so than TikTok. I uh, feel like um, Penn and uh, Eloise's friendship is now starting to repair itself because Eloise was like, "You need to stop Caressida, and we need to. This is we need to do this." So I I feel like that's a a good sign. The next um, I'm looking over to see the next the next episode is episode seven and that is joining of hands. So we shall see how that goes. Okay, I will update you later. Bye bye. Okay, guys, I moved, I had to move upstairs, um, cause my daughter woke up and she was like, I want breakfast. So I stopped and made her breakfast and, um, then I came upstairs to finish this cause I was not going to watch this in front of her. Um, although there's nothing t too scandalous in this one. Um, unless you talk about the very ending with Benedict that dude and Lady Tilly, Lady Tilly needs to go away. I just, I want Benedict with Sophie so much. I love the, um, the wedding. The wedding was really, really cool to see. They made her look beautiful. Colin, I get why he's upset. I think he feels like an idiot and that's why he's pouting. He's pouting a lot. Um, the, the wedding was really pretty. I enjoyed that. Um, I enjoying Lady Featherington. She's a good character, but I really like Francesca's like, the secret I have is that I'm engaged to Lord Kilmartin. Yeah, the and Queen Charlotte's like, well, yeah, I knew that. That was pretty funny. Um, I love Kate and Anthony together. That was fantastic. It's like Daphne and the Duke do not exist in this world anymore because they're just gone. I want Lady Tilly to go away. <laughs> I just don't like her. I feel like the showrunners made an error by um, keeping Benedict the way he is for like three seasons. It was too much. It's too much. Like, I get why they did it. Like, because everybody loves Penelope and Colin. But it just, it doesn't make sense. Um, because Colin could have just been away for the season instead of, and then have him come back the fourth season and have um, Penelope do some growing and maturing in between that. I just, she just, her argument is that she wants independence and that she loves him. And I'm just like, okay, you can't have both, obviously. So what are you going to choose? Anyway, they're married now. Yay. Um, Still think she's too good for him, but that's me. And Cressida. Mm, Cressida's. I feel bad for her until the very end when I know she's figuring out who Lady Whistledown is and she's going to tell the queen. I know it. All right. I am on to the last episode, which is episode eight, and it's Into the Light. So she needs. I think we're going to get a resolution on the lady whistled down stuff 
I'm hoping we get to meet Sophie, but I'm not holding my breath. Okay, I will talk to you as soon as I am done with um, episode eight. Okay, bye. Okay, so Bridgerton episode eight. The um, I liked how it ended with uh, who got the male baby out of the three sisters. That was fun. I thought that's sort of poetic. Um, I liked that um, Penelope and Eloise repaired their relationship as well as Penelope and her mother repaired their relationship. I felt like um, the whole thing with Benedict and Tilly and with Paul, I don't like Tilly and did not like her from the beginning, even after the whole thing and him saying, no, bye. Um, I was okay with that, but I did like Benedict with Paul. I had no problem with, with the whole three thing. It, it, it didn't work with Colin, but it worked with, with, um, Benedict. I liked seeing, um, Francesca Mary John Sterling. I liked the evolution of Violet's relationship with uh, Lord Marcus and with Lady Danbury. I thought that was gorgeously written. I did not enjoy Francesca's reaction to Michaela Sterling because I felt like that was out of character for her, even in the book and in the movie or TV show, because she always struck me as a very devoted character and one who when she made up her mind she went with it um and fidelity is very strong in that family and for her to have that reaction to Michaela Sterling felt like just like days after she got married was just off to me I did not like it in the book I if I remember correctly and it's been a while since I've read it John died and she had years to grieve before she started her romance with Michael. So I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that whole arc because of that one thing. It just felt, it felt icky to me. It felt like she cheated on her brand new husband, to tell you the truth. Um, emotionally cheating. So yeah, that is why I'm like hesitant on her season now. I'm like, oh crap. Because When He Was Wicked is one of my absolute favorite novels. I did, um, it's like, second to the first and honestly interchanges with with uh the viscount who loved me and i ranked them so i'll let you know down below so my final thoughts on this series as a whole i liked that uh we saw major growth with penelope and with eloise as well as um we did see some growth with colin do i like colin now no that's just <laughs> that's never gonna change i think um, I liked the whole thing with how Lady Whistledown was um, revealed, especially with the Queen. That was a lot of fun. Um, I loved seeing Kate and Anthony getting their happily ever after and seeing her pregnant. I thought that was great. Penelope and Colin needed more time on the screen. And Penelope needed to fight for herself with Colin she just her argument was I love you instead of saying listen I'm an independent woman I am able to do this and you need to listen to me just because I love you does not give me give you the right to treat me this way I would have loved to see her say that but she did not I really liked the um that we got a glimpse of what's going to happen that we know uh Benedict is going to get his his book because he said, and because in a year he has to go to Violet's masquerade, and Violet would never let Violet would never let him skip it. And we know from the book that's where he meets Sophie. Like I did this season, I lowered my expectations after season two, and I'm going to continue to keep them lowered because they're just going to do what they're going to do, and it doesn't matter if we love the characters or not. I think show I think show Colin is better than book Colin. So they did better on that than the book. I feel like I'm wondering where they're going to go with Eloise. 
because now she's going to Scotland with Francesca, where in the book she ran away to Sir Philip. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but we will see. I loved the whole Featherton arc with the babies. That cracked me up a lot. Lady Featherington is a good character. She is well written in the in the TV show. And the actress who plays her is does a phenomenal job with her. Same with Lady Danbury. I have I love Lady Danbury in the books and I love her in the show. So I am all about that. I did not mind the whole thing with Benedict and doing the whole bye thing. I actually feel like that fit his his character very well. I thought it was again well done. I just didn't like Lady, uh, Lady Tilly. I did not like her character. She just seemed mean and aloof and I never warmed up to her because of how they originally met. So and that's probably why <laughs> I didn't like her character because I understand he was sowing his own oats and that's fine. I love that they used Taylor Swift's You Belong With Me as the wedding song between Colin and and Penelope. I love that. That was so great. I thought that was very appropriate. That was a very appropriate song for those two. Oh, Cressida and Eloise's friendship. I didn't like it. I loved that we finally got to see Cress, uh, not Cressida, but Eloise and Penelope make up and become best friends again. I love that. Um, I feel like Cressida was sympathetic up to a point. And then after she started blackmailing Penelope, I was like, nope, all my sympathies with you are out the window. You deserve what you're going to get because she's a bully and I didn't like that. But for what her, what her parents did to her, I was sympathetic for that. But her actions later on made me change my mind and I was no longer sympathetic for her, towards her at all. So I do have no hopes for Benedict's story. I kind of hope that they do Sophie right, but again, I don't, my hopes are on the floor at this point. So, um, for my rating for this one, I'd probably do a 3.5 and just round the whole entire series up to, or season up to a four because of the character growth and the fact that Penelope, she, she was a really good character to uh, follow in this one. And a lot of the side characters. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know if you've watched it and what you think down below. I would love to hear. And if you made this far in this video and you want to let me know that you've been here, but you don't want to leave anything, please leave me a pink heart with the diamonds emoji. And until next time, my friends, happy reading. Bye.